Hi everybody, this is Fred from Game Focus. Uh, on August 25th, uh, Xbox Canada held in Toronto its annual showcase Xbox event uh, to talk about all the games that you guys gonna see uh, for the last part of 2016 and beginning of 2017. And to talk about that, we have DJ with us. So here's the video. So DJ, you uh, were representing Game Focus over there at the X16 uh, event. Uh, I went there a few times on uh, older events, and Microsoft usually is is choosing uh, location very carefully. And what about you know this one? Before talking about the games and uh, the reason why you were there, tell me about the location. Was this uh, somewhere interesting? Actually, a real nice spot in Toronto that I'd never been to before. It's uh, the Distillery District, and yeah, uh, the whole event took place in a beautiful old, I guess, uh, old factory from the 1800s where they used to make, uh, I guess, whiskey and rum, and uh, now they're showcasing uh, the latest in video games. And, and it looks like a perfect place to showcase games because it was kind of dark, because I saw some pictures over the internet and I, I thought this could be really, really cool for showcasing games, right? Yeah, dark and cavernous, but at the same time, you know, you'd have the the big Gears of War uh, symbols uh, projected oh, oh. On, on onto the awesome. walls. Yeah, <laughs> big, big uh, Halo Wars two, uh, you know, projected on the walls. Forza three projected. So, um, you know, they uh, they made good use of the space, and you know, with uh, seventy Xbox S or Xbox One S's uh, set up, there was just oh, wow. that healthy glow of of uh, of Ah, uh, you know, games. before talking about the games, uh, because you know you, you're coming with it, with it, with this. Tell me about the S. Uh, what's your first uh, thought about that? Uh, you know, I, I think I was a little skeptical at first on you know, if it'd be a, a nicer looking machine. Microsoft isn't always known for you know developing no, the, were, yeah. <laughs> the nicest looking consoles, yeah. but it is a, a slick piece of hardware. Just so noticeably smaller and um yeah i i mean it i had no intention of ever getting one earlier you know i was totally content with my uh original day one xbox yeah, one but course. after going i'm start it, it put the bug in my head that oh really yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> wow okay so about the games i know there, there there were quite a few games over there uh you know i won't name all of them but you know uh, gears of war hello wars and all of that but you know we, we won't keep you for for a long time here but what are the, the the key games you saw? What what are the names you uh, I, you thought they were uh, more uh, interesting over there? You know, I was surprised that Forza Three or Forza Horizon Three was uh, one of the games that that shone the brightest that that I played. Hmm. Um, I'm surprised, I, to be honest. I was I was surprised myself. They um, they chose wisely with the setting of Australia. Um, it's, <laughs> it's beautifully rendered and they have this, uh, so many instances in the racing that I did, um, large swaths of standing water that your car would have to go through. And oh. you, you almost felt this visceral impact of, of the deceleration of your vehicle as it would go through the water and then back onto the, on, onto the land. Um, it was just fun. A lot of times racing games take themselves too seriously. And I was really surprised that it uh, hit that right balance where, you know, sometimes the best uh, racing games have a little bit of uh, arcade uh, quality to them. Yeah, the, the, the balance so. between sim and arcade is, is what every developer tried to achieve. And it's not that easy, right? It is, and it's not, and I think that Forza Horizon 3 might finally take the mantle from what I think is the uh, Microsoft's best racing game ever, Project Gotham Racing. Mm, you're, you're so right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what else? Uh, you know, I had never heard of Outla uh, Outlast. Um, that apparently came out in 2014, kind of a sur survival horror. Yeah. Um, but Outlast 2 was uh, showcased there. It was only on two screens, and it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I uh, was so surprised. Uh, you know, typically, um, you know, you think of you know Resident Evils and uh, as kind of the scarier games, and they might have a little bit of a um, 
uh, you know, frightening element to them. Mm -hmm. But uh, Outlast 2, I can see, is mm. going to conceivably be terrifying. Could it be a candidate for VR? Very much so, because <laughs> you spend the entire game looking through a video camera. Oh. Um, because you need the video camera for its yeah. uh, night vision um, functionality. So that's actually a great, great idea. It would be a perfect game for VR. And I think in my 10 minutes with it, I actually like seriously jumped twice. And I don't know if I've oh, ever done really? that for a video for game. For real? Yeah, I looked like a real dummy <laughs> standing there, <laughs> jumping back uh, with my headphones on. but uh, With journalists I, and all of that, and yeah. you've got your pride, and you, oh, no, no, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> so what other games uh, caught your attention? Uh, you know, I, I really liked what I saw from Halo Wars 2. Uh, I, I revisited Halo Wars and um, prior to going, and, you know, it's... Uh, it's common knock is that, you know, an RTS shouldn't be on a console and, and it can never be developed right. But it worked so well on the Xbox 360. You're right, it I did. I like that game so much. And Halo Wars 2, um, you know, they've, they've made improvements to it, um, but it still has that, that core functionality of, you know, you, you can easily select the troops that you want, get them to where you want, and... Um, Did yeah, you, had, was that close to the beta we saw a few uh, weeks ago, or this was something completely different? Uh, you're, you're right. It is, uh, it's the same uh, as the beta that was out. And so they were showcasing uh, some three-on-three -three, uh, okay. multiplayer firefights. Mm. Uh, okay. There was also um, a presentation on what you can expect from the story mode. Mm. And oh. um, yeah, there was uh, really, really interested in that. I, I'm a big fan of the Halo fiction. And uh, so basically... Read the Halo books, uh, DJ? I have read almost all of them. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, mm. The one about the Forerunner trilogy was so bad that I own all three books, but <laughs> only got through the first one. Well, mm. uh, but yeah, the, the events take, take off uh, basically right after Halo 5. And, um, you know, they're, I they're really look forward for that game. Oh, absolutely, yes. So, uh, so what other game caught your attention? I was really surprised. I mean, it's it's uh, maybe it's, it wouldn't be that surprising to anyone, but Gears of War Four was a but, load of fun. Yeah, but we saw so much of that game already, right? True. Yes. Um, but the the one thing I guess in experiencing it that uh, I didn't really realize in anything I'd seen about the game before is just how dynamic the the cover system is. Oh. So I mean, everything that you're getting behind to take cover from or your enemies are um it moves within within the environment so i mean you can't just stay stationary behind somewhere and and pick people off uh you know the the wind is 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 moving uh you know cut cover items you know out of the way explosions are um it it really makes the uh the battlefield feel alive which which isn't something that i really picked up on uh, in any previous so, videos. it's not just a Gears of War. I, I don't think so. I, I don't really care for Gears of War. Um, I've tried to like it. I've started Gears of War 1 three times, and I just can never get through it. And I'm a person who really likes finishing games. But I was excited with playing uh, Gears of War 4. The, the, the character models look better. They don't have those stupid out of proportions that Marcus <laughs> Phoenix did. No, uh, yeah, you're right. And the, uh, you know, I think, I thought Mar Marcus Phoenix was, is one of the most unlikable characters in video games. And, you know, the new crew that they have for number four, I guess his son, uh, good thing he's not like his dad. He seems to be a much better video game character. So I'm really looking forward to that. So, did you have the, ch the chance to see Happy, uh, We Happy Few? I did, and, and We Happy Few, uh, I really had two unique takes on it. Number one, the beginning, which I think uh, the, the beginning sequence, which uh, was how the game was, was initially uh, announced um, you know, many months back. Um, it's brilliant. Uh, it's so uh, makes you feel like you've been transplanted, you know, to a different 
to a different time full of just insane people and insane circumstances. But when I actually got into the gameplay, I was really surprised about how much it was about um, survival management. Um, the You have to monitor your hunger levels, your, your water intake, uh, the amount of sleep you're getting. It's is really I had no idea that um, that was going to be you know a, a focus of the game. Uh, yeah, so, complete surprise. So what else? Uh, and maybe one last game you want to talk about? Yeah, um, Recore. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, I I can see why you know there is the the controversy with Recore and and you know the the, the whispers that you know it's uh, you know problems with development and and maybe some people wanting to distance themselves from it. Um, yeah, I'd, it just felt really lukewarm and tepid, and I I never got the impression that I was playing a. Uh, you know, an action adventure shooter in the year 2016. Um, I sort of had the same um, reaction to when I played Lost Planet, uh, you know, okay. five years ago. You know, it it had some hype, but when you actually got into it, it was it was just a um, not a very interesting experience. Mm. So I I hope my limited time with that game is. Uh, maybe an anomaly, but... I hope people will learn from uh, No Man's Skies and, you know, promoting games a lot for, like, two years. That's what it does, I mean... It's yeah. hard to live up to. You Maybe sometimes it's better to lower the expectation and stay low profile and then get your game out. So, maybe recording isn't that category of game which could have beneficiated from a little bit less exposure and then you're surprised with the product you've you've got on your end absolutely yes i i i think you're right and the one thing i didn't see which um you know it's one of the promises of the game is kind of the the interchanging of those cores amongst uh you know different uh robots is things that i've seen in in, in previews and such so that uh, facet of the game wasn't uh, wasn't able to experience that. So there is hope for it because that so seemed to be one of the more interesting. So you keep a door open there. Absolutely. Okay, yes. perfect. DJ, thank you very much for your time. I know you could have talked much more about the games you saw over there, but you're gonna have the chance, and we do uh, we do have articles uh, on the website talking a little bit more deeply about uh, those experiences. So uh, thank you again for your time, and uh, watch for more videos on uh, GameFocus.ca. Bye. Bye.